Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. Welcome to Week in Review. This is a series we do on the Dice Tower every week where we tell you what we reviewed the previous week and what we think of it. Then if you want to see more, you just click the links in the description below. Here we go. Hey everybody, I'm Z Garcia. Here's what I did last week. So I reviewed Yokai Sketch, which I gave a 6 out of 10 to. This is a two-player only card game, sort of took a war style in which you are playing these yokai to your side of different stacks, trying to, when you hit a certain threshold, combining both sides, have the most on your side, and then you'll claim that thing. It's a clever idea, but certainly one we've seen before, this idea of being forced to, in many cases, play to your side, and therefore pushing these thresholds. I found the game to be attractive, it's got nice hard work, though very little of it, and great production values, but the gameplay is tried and true, i.e. a little bit tired, and doesn't really evolve from session to session. You will not, there's no discovery, there isn't any sense of uh, pizzazz here. There's a couple of special types of cards, special powers, and they're simple and straightforward, but you also run the risk of one player drawing the majority of them and therefore feeling more special than the other one, you know. Having one player really feel like, well, I never, I never seem to draw the do fun things cards and, uh, you know, feeling let down by that. I reviewed Gap, which I rated a 7.5 out of 10. This is also a card game, a much more mass market style card game, in which you are collecting sets. You're going to be playing cards from your hand to the table in front of you, and then based on that number, taking some from the middle. And you're trying to have a lot of some numbers and very few of other numbers, uh, or colors, I should say. Really neat, very clean, very simple game, but a, a, one of those super little fillers. You can throw this in your back pocket, take it, teach it to anybody, and I think you're going to have a good time. I can see it going over well with folks that are used to playing Uno, playing traditional card games, that sort of thing. I can also see it being a an easy filler that you can chat and sort of, you know, have snacks during if you are a gamer. So I think it's going to serve both camps, and I, I really did enjoy it, though it's got some weird production ideas. They're not issues, but... You know, all the cards have foiling on them and things like that. Kind of a weird move, but maybe that's what it takes to be noticed on the shelves these days. And if so, I get it. And then lastly, I reviewed The Lost Code, which I gave a 7.5 to. This is a reworking of a game called Think Straight from Leo Colovini. And this is a really interesting, engaging deduction game uh, in which you are trying to figure out what numbers are in front of you facing away. And you can see everybody else's. You have to deduce what you might have and make guesses on those. Really neat stuff. I had some issues with the production of the game. Uh, the cardboard that you are using, you have to fold all these pieces of cardboard and stick them onto these log things. And it's honestly a pain. They started to fray on me. It was, a, it, it was maddening. I mean, it really was. And uh, that definitely, the, the game's score for me took a hit because of it. The game play, uh, oh, and, uh, and also some of the positioning of the score track and some, some guessing discs. It's, it's a bad idea. It's badly laid out. But the game play is good. It's a really engaging uh, deduction game. If you, if you enjoy crunchy, uh, figure out the math behind things. It's a push-your-luck game a little bit, too, as you try to make guesses that make sense but are as narrow as possible for a bigger return to your score. Then, if you like that sort of thing, you're, I think you're really going to like this one. I enjoy it very much, and uh, it's one that's going to stick around in my own personal collection. So, there you go, everybody. That's it for me. I'll see you on the next one. Chris here, and welcome to Weekend Update. First game that I took a look at was Bug Council of Backyardia. 6.5 from me. A very interesting trick-taking game. has a cute little artwork and a funny little theme to it. It's a bit chaotic as the status of all the five different suits constantly shifts. It's unique, though. It's worth looking into. It's pretty fun. So 6.5 from me. Next up, Jerusalem. This is a 9. I really enjoyed this sort of a deck building game that has a very fantastic theme. It's very respectfully done about trying to seat different followers at the Last Supper table. And I sit there and think, it's weird they made a game out of this theme. But they did it very well. It's very historically well researched. I really enjoy it, so that's why it's a 9. And then lastly, the uh, Rome in a Day. I also gave a 9. This is an I Split You Choose game that has a little bit of tiling. The tiling is super unimportant. But it's actually a strength that the tiling part is weaker because then it's, it just gives you enough information to use a really good 
I split you choose mechanism where everyone at the table is doing it simultaneously, splitting for one person on one side and then grabbing from the players on the other side and then you switch it up each round. Lightning fast game, super good, a 9 out of 10 from me and that has been my week. Okay, so I was only in one review this week and that is for Jerusalem. It is a resource management type of worker placement game and I liked it a lot. I gave it an eight. I know the scores are very varied, but that is the review I was in this week. Hi, I'm Wendy Yee and this week I reviewed two games. The first one is Bug Council of Backyardia. I give this a seven. This is one, so this is a trick-taking game, a little like card game. It has a little bit more chaoticness, but what I really like about it is that it has a benefit for being the highest player or the person who wins the trick essentially and then also the lowest the person with the weakest card um the way that trump changes and stuff it's interesting it definitely is chaotic so this is not one of those trick taking games that you're going to take super seriously and really plan out all of your turns um there's just yeah it's kind of a fun element of of chaos of i'm not sure what trump is going to be and i'm not sure what's going to score those extra points at the end of the game so that's bug council of backyardia the next one is Rebuilding Rome in a Day. There we go. Rebuilding Rome in a Day. Uh, this one I gave an eight. Um, it is a tile placement game that does an I split you choose. So I split up these tiles um, in two different ways. And before I get to add them to my city, my Rome, essentially, um, I split them, you choose. And so you determine which ones you want. So I really want to make something sweet enough that you'll grab it so I get the tiles that I want. But also, um, I want to make sure that I get enough scoring things. So you want to make them even, but also meet the needs of the other players as the game progresses. So I really enjoy that. Tons of fun. Also check out our top 100 videos. There are a ton of them coming at you. Um, I hope you're enjoying them. Keep moving along with that. But yeah, let's go ahead and see who's next. Everybody, it's Mike Delisio, And this week I reviewed two games. They were both excellent. First up is Tiwanaku a deduction game that plays like a cross between Minesweeper and Sudoku. I gave this an 8.5. I really, really like this game a lot. Uh, some logic deduction type games work well for me and some don't, but this is one of the ones that really just seems to make sense. You are moving around on a board trying to determine particular terrain tiles that are gonna have crops on them that are, you're trying to guess what the crops are, and they're gonna be working according to some kind of logical rules. Really, really like this game a lot. Then I reviewed the expansion to Millie Fiori, The Masterpieces, which I also gave an 8.5. So a game that I like a lot has an expansion that gives you more options without changing the core feel of the game. I think it makes it a better two player game and it also improves the three and four player game with just a little bit more complexity. A really solid expansion to a fantastic game. Well, that's gonna be it for me this week. Let's keep it moving. All right, for me, I took a look at Truffle Pigs, which I wanted to like. I like the theme of pigs going around and hunting down these little mushrooms, but it's too constrained, a little too chaotic for me. It just doesn't work, really. Five out of ten. And Jerusalem. Uh, I am the outlier in this one. I just don't like any of the mechanisms in Jerusalem. I don't think they come together very well at all. I feel too constrained, but uh, I'm sure a lot of people disagree with my five out of ten rating. Uh, then we have Moisterio. This one's a hard one to pronounce. It's about building a cathedral. I wish the components were nicer looking in this one, but wow, some really good dice worker placement. Seven out of 10. Then we have Rome in a Day. I split, you choose. Very quick, simple filler game. Very smooth. A lot of people are going to like this one. 7.5. Um, Vertu, build your own rondelle. Move around this rondelle as you're fighting other people for control of Italy. So a lot going on in this one, 8 out of 10. Caldera Park, the sequel to Savannah Park, and better than Savannah Park, as you place tiles out in almost a bingo-esque type thing, but with some neat freedoms it gives you, 8 out of 10. Big Bads of Tolk's Cave, this is, this, uh, this is a expansion for Quest Kids. I really like this one with my son as a fifth player, adds a bunch of little modular stuff items. It definitely raises the difficulty of the game by double, but also my kids are getting older, so they liked it, 8.5. And then the Lost Code uh, deduction game, sheer deduction. There's a reprint of an older game called Think Straight, which I love, but had terrible components. This one has okay components, but still that great game. I love it. 
Also, uh, if you haven't heard, uh, lots of the folks in Dice Tower are doing their top 100s of all times list starting this week. We did a, I did a Kickstarter look back. I love deck building so much that I did 10 more great deck building games. And we did our top 10 expansions, me, Z, and Mike, and much more. So check it all out in the Dice Tower. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell, and this has been Week in Review.